here. Better light. There you go. By Dr. Seuss. Way back in the days when the grass was so green, and the pond was still wet, and the clouds were still clean, and the song of the swimmy swans rang out in space, one morning I came to this glorious place. And I first saw the trees, the truffle trees, the bright colored tufts on the truffle trees, mile after mile in the fresh morning breeze. And under the trees I saw a brown barbelotes frisking about in their barbelote suits as they played in the shade and ate truffle fruits. From the ripple's pond came the comfortable sound of the humming fish humming while splashing around. But those trees, those trees, those truffle trees, all my life I've been searching for trees such as disease. The touch of their tufts was much softer than silk and they had the sweet smell of fresh butterfly milk. I felt a great leaping of joy in my heart. I knew just what I'd do. I unloaded my cart. In no time at all, I had built a small shop. Then I chopped down a truffle tree with one chop. And the great skill for skill, with great speedy speed, I took the soft tuft and I knitted a fneed. The instant I finished, I heard a gazump, I looked. I saw something pop out of the stump the, of the tree I chopped down. It was sort of a man. Describe him. That's hard. I don't know if I can. He was shortish and oldish and brownish and mossy, and he spoke with a voice that was sharpest and bossy. Mister, he said with a sawdusty sneeze, I am the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues. I am asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. He was very upset as he shouted and puffs. What's that thing you've made on my truffle tuft? Look, Lorax, I said, there's no cause for alarm. I trapped just one tree. I am doing no harm. I'm being quite useful. This thing is a fneed. A fneed to find something that all people need. It's a shirt. It's a sock. It's a glove. It's a hat. But it has other uses, yes. Far beyond that. You could use it for curtains, for pillows, for sheets, or covers for bicycle seats. The Lorax said, Sir, you're crazy with greed. There's no one on earth who would buy that false need. But, but for the very next minute, I proved he was wrong. For just that, that minute, a trap came along and thought that need I had made it was great. He happily bought it for $3.98. I laughed at the relax, you poor stupid guy. You can never tell what some people will buy. I repeat, cried the Lorax. Um, I repeat, cried the Lorax. I am the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I am busy, I told him. Shut up, if you please. I rushed across the room, and in no time at all, I built a radio phone. I put in a quick call, called all my brothers and uncles and aunts, and I said, listen here, here's a wonderful chance for the whole Rensselaer family to get mighty rich. Get over here fast, take the road to North Niche. Turn left at Weehawk and sharp right at South Stitch. And in no time at all, in the factory built, the whole Rensselaer family was working full tilt. We were all knitting knees, just as busy as beads, to the sound of chopping of truffle trees. Then, oh baby, oh, how my business did grow. Now chopping one tree at a time was too slow. So I quickly invented my super axe hacker, which whacked off four truffle trees in one smacker. We were making sneeds th four times as fast as before, and that Lorax, he didn't show up anymore. But the next morning he knocked on my new office door. He snapped, I'm the Laura. I am the Laura, I speak for the trees. Which you seem to be chopping as fast as you please. But I'm also in charge of the brown barbaloots, who played in the shade in the barbaloot suits and happily loved eating truffle fruits. Now thanks to your hacking my, your tr my trees to the ground, there's not enough truffle fruit to go around. And my poor barbaloots are all getting the crummies because they have no gas. 
because they have gas and no food in their tummies. They love living here, but I can't let them stay. They will have to find food, and I hope that they may. Good luck, boys, he cried as he, th as he sent them away. I, the one slur, felt sad as I watched them all go. But business is business, and business must grow, regardless of tummies, regardless of crummies and tummies, you know. I meant no harm. I most truly did not. But I had to grow bigger, so bigger I got. I biggered my factory, I biggered the roads. I biggered my wagons, I biggered my loads. Of these I shipped out. I was shipping them forth to south, to east, to west, to north. I went right on biggering, selling more needs, and I biggered my money, which everyone needs. Then again he came back. I was fixing some pipes. When that old nauseous Lorax came back with more gripes. I'm the Lorax, he coughed and he whiffed. He sneezed and he snuffled, he snarled, he sniffed. Once there he cried with the, cr with the cruffless talk. Croak. Once, sir, you're making such smogulous smoke. My poor swami swans, why they can't sing a note. No one can sing with smog in their throat. And so, said the Lorax, please pardon my cough. They cannot live here, so I'm sending them off. Where will they go? I don't hopefully know. But they may have to fly for a month for a year to, to escape the smog you've smogged up around here. One more, said the Lorax, he dan his dander was up. Let me say a few words about your glub pity glup. Your machine chugs on day and night without a stop, making glub pity glup and sclub pity slop. And what do you do with this leftover goo? I'll show you, you dirty monster man, you. You glummed up the pond with a herring fish hum. No more can they hum, for their gills are all glummed. So I'm sending them off. Oh, their future is dreary. They'll walk on their friends to get woefully wary and search for some food that isn't, for some water that isn't so smeary. And then I got mad. I got terribly mad. I yelled at the Lorax. Now listen here, Dad. All you do is yap, yap, yap and say bad, bad, bad. Well, I had my rights, sir, and I'm telling you, I intend to do just going on what would I... I intend to go on doing just what I do, and for your information, you Lorak, I'm figuring on getting on biggering, and biggering, and biggering, and biggering, turning more truffle trees into sneeze, which everyone, everyone, everyone needs. And at that very moment, we heard a loud whack. From outside in the fields came a sicken sickening smack of an axe on a tree, then we heard the tree fall. The very last truffle, a tree of them all. No more trees, no more needs, no more work to be done. So in no time, my uncles and aunts, everyone, all waved goodbye. They jumped into my cars and drove away under the smoke-smuggled stars. Now all that was left with the bad-smelling sky was my big, big, empty factory, the Lorax, and I. The Lorax said nothing, just gave me a glance, just gave me a very sad, sad backward glance, and I'll never forget the grim look on his face when he hasted himself and took leave of this place through a hole in the smog without leaving a trace. And that, and all that the Lorax left here in his mist was a small pile of rocks with one word, unless. Whatever that meant, well, I just couldn't guess. That was long, long, long ago. But each day since that day, I have sat here and worried and worried away. For the years with, while my buildings have fallen apart, I've worried about it with all of my heart. But, but now, says the Rensselaer, now that you're here, the word of the Lorax seems perfectly clear. Unless someone like you can a whole lot of what? Nothing's going to get better. It's not. So, catch, calls the onesler. He lets something fall. It's a truffle of seed. It's the last one of all. You're in charge of the last of the truffle of seeds. And truffle of trees are what everyone needs. Plant a, a new truffle, treat it with care, give it clean water, and feed it fresh air. For a forest. Protect it from axes that hack. Then the Lorax and all of his friends may come back. The end. Woo! Woo! All right, Jenny, watch your...
What? You want your phone? You want it back? Performing Arts Unit. <laughs> Campers, you have until I get to zero to be sitting back in your bus line.